You know when you're sitting there with your foot in a cast and you get that feeling that you should immediately build a set of pogo crutches with lights and drink holders? Well that's the feeling I had and that's what we're now doing. So in my last video, we got a bit of a plan together, broke some stuff and started welding things. Since starting this project though, I found that my foot is well on its way to recovery, allowing me to start load bearing with it, and most importantly, allowing me to do whatever this is. But what better way to undo that progress than to finish building the world's first pogo crutches. A new day. Okay, I think our next step is to get these bolts in here. I'm gonna name you number one. One back. All right, big moment, does that line up? And will a bolt go through it? Find out now. Ah, oh, Stay. Stay. For the first time in human history, a pogo stick has been united with a crutch. All right, now we can do this top bracket here. How's that? There we go. Get the, get the welding beans out. Kragos welding beans. They're high in iron and low in strength. Try them, you face. Oh yeah. Uh, that feels good. Just like a regular crutch. They are mounted on. Now another idea I've had just before I paint them is to salvage a couple of the foot pegs from the pogo sticks and then we can weld one onto each of the crutches. Then you hold on here, you put your foot on there and you stilt pogo your way to recovery. So I shortened the length of the pegs so they wouldn't whack my shins when I'm in crutch mode and then I got them all welded up. Then this is just a nice close up to show you that not all of my worlds are shitty. Once that was done, the framework is pretty much complete, so I got it nicely painted up and left it to dry. Ah, silver paint. You always turn out crappy. So to do the elbow bits, which look a little bit like this, I might use plastic, heat it and bend it. I was gonna use PVC, but it's too thin. So I'm actually thinking about using this very plastic that I'm drawing on now, acrylic, and it will look kind of cool as well. I measured up the existing crutches, which seem to be a good universal fit for most people. Then it was time to cut some acrylic sheet, which is always a pain in the ass if you're using the wrong blade for the job because acrylic melts and refuses behind itself as you cut, which is kind of like someone constantly clicking edit undo as you work. But with a bit of force, you can snap it after you're done, sometimes. I've then made the edges and corners nice and neat on the belt sander so it will look nice and pretty when we clean it up. Ah, oh, yeah, it's smooth. Then to allow the elbow brace to pivot, I've drilled a hole in the middle. We can now heat that and bend it into an arm shape. Welcome to Craig's Cooking Show. We've got the oven on, we've got the acrylic in there. We're gonna bend that when it gets to temperature. I think the temperature is about 150 degrees where it starts to get floppy. And then I'm gonna mold it around a bottle and then we'll have our arm shape. Mmm, delicious. Fresh acrylic, just like mama used to bake. Hot. I think that's almost ready to eat. It's then just a case of grabbing the acrylic with some welding gloves and carefully wrapping it around a bottle and holding it in place until it cools, until you realize it's too small and repeat this process three or four times. As for attaching these to our pogo crutches, that was going to be a little tricky because I wanted them to be able to tilt up and down like normal crutches, but also rotate, all while keeping clear of the battery compartment. I ended up messing around with a stack of different ideas then realized the simplest solution would be to butcher up some door hinges. I chopped these into two equal pieces that looked less like dodgy door hinges and then used some bolts to give them some good tension so the arm brace wouldn't just be all floppy. Then to permanently attach them and get them clear of the battery cap, I cut up some flat bar, then smashy smash with the hammer into shape. I also discovered the correct way to use grip lock pliers to hold your work in place. 
Remember, it's not about the quality of your work, it's about how fancy you are with the tools. And then I finally welded them up. It's then just a case of drilling some holes in the hinges and bolting it all up. It worked out quite nicely, offering a good range of movement. Uh, the batteries we mounted in the end of the tube, and I'm going to use these reticulation fittings. I'm going to cut that, and this end cap, hopefully, will screw on over the top. Press down on the batteries. Lighting. I'm thinking about using a couple of these. I've only got one here, so I'm going to have to pull the other one off the wall and replace it later. And that is exactly what I did. I cut the thread in half, so I would have one for each pogo crutch, and I saved money. They were too small to fit, so I had to hone them out a bit. And then I got some glue in there, and they fitted over the end nicely. So the batteries I'm gonna use are the 18650s. I need three in each one. I honestly have no idea how I'm gonna do this. And the wires, somehow. I'm just gonna get a bunch of stuff, throw it at it, and then we'll reflect on how that turned out. Here is what I did. I chopped open a cheap eBay drill battery that never worked, but it was full of cells that were all okay. Then, to contain them, I used a PVC tube. It was too wide, so I split it down the side so it would fit. Big, small, big, small, big, small. I used a bit of heat to relax the plastic so it would fit, and then heated and flared one end a little so it wouldn't drop down into the pogo crutch abyss. Oh, yeah. For the battery spring, I salvaged a battery spring from a thing that is used to do stuff and then glued it in with some epoxy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Liking it. That's good. And once again, it looks like I'm making something really suspicious. And then I've got the LED strip mounted on the front. Clip, clip. I thought it would be cool to use some old high brightness LEDs to edge light the acrylic shoulder braces. Basically, if you mount one or more LEDs in the side of acrylic and then either sand or polish different edges, you can get the light to project from the edges where you want to see it. The thing that's hard here is this is five millimeter acrylic and this is a five millimeter drill bit. So there's a good chance this is gonna go pear shaped. Easy. 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 Oh. <laughs> you. Yeah, I probably should have used smaller LEDs, but I already had these ones on hand. So then I used a variety of drill bits and tips to get the hole roughly to size. I then rounded out the holes the best I could with an engraver, and then I polished them up with a cotton bud and some car polish. There we go, all polished up. Now we'll get maximum light through there. Learning nothing from my mistakes, I then drilled out the other elbow brace. Crap. Then it was just a case of burying that sucker in super glue. It was then time to do the final wiring. So here's what happened. I got the wires threaded through, I fed them through the hand grip and got the switch wired up. Then in keeping it nice and neat at the top of the tube, I ran the wires down the inside of the tube which kind of ruined the batteries being able to slide in easily, but it still did the job. So then I thought, let's turn it on and give it a go. The lights had power, which is great, and then the switch started making a buzzing noise. I thought, cool, a new feature. But then the tube started to get warm, so I yanked the hand grip off to see what was going on. Smoke started coming out of there, so I popped the battery compartment open, which also started smoking, and then there was just fire and buzzing noises and all sorts of new features I hadn't planned on. So it turns out that I pulled one of the wires a little bit too hard while feeding them through the tube over a sharp edge, which I thought I'd smoothed out. But this cut through the insulation and caused a short circuit and melted the wires. I feel like past Craig may have considered this, but not done enough about it. We just gotta get rid of some of these burrs on the edge so when we pull our wires through, it doesn't just strip them all away. Some sort of short circuit, crutch fire. Nobody likes a crutch fire. So I rewired it, plus added in some fuses and ran the wire down the outside of the battery compartment for smoother battery action. Finally, the wiring is done. Then you slip your batteries in. They just drop in beautifully now. So that means you can tip them out, recharge them. 
I'm really happy with how this end cap setup worked out. So what you've got, you've got a cap within a cap. So this one contacts the top of the battery, then this one comes over the top, and the inside one stays still while the outside one can rotate and put pressure on it and clamp it down. So that goes on like that. We screw that down. And then we've got a switch on the front and this should still hopefully be working. It was working last night. Oh yeah. I'm really happy with how the red LED has turned out in the top. It looks good. It actually, it actually looks really good. I was just gonna use the arm thing off like normal crutches. I'm so glad I did this instead. Happy with that. The light strip is very bright. It's actually too bright. Right, in the end for the LED, I've just got, there's a resistor on there and it, there was nowhere for the parts to go. So I've just encased it in some epoxy and that has uh, gone quite nicely. Oh yeah. From here, uh, we've got some of the most important accessories to put on. We've got a bottle opener. Oh, I'll probably put that on the right. And then on this one, we've got a drink holder. That'll, that'll go on the side here somewhere. So you can, you can drop a beer in there and crutch your way to further injury. It was then finally time to get the springs inserted. I got them greased up and then tried to work out a way to crush them back into the tube. In the end, I managed to use a sash clamp to compress them enough to get the bolt through. We are almost done now. The end's in sight, the springs are in. Put the top cap on. We can bolt these on, put on the foot pedals, and I think we're ready to crutch. In my next video, it is all about testing them out. Leave a comment with your prediction on what you think will happen. Will I break another foot? Will I cause someone else to break their foot? Let's find out. I'll see you very soon. Try them, you face.